Welcome to our webinar on how to enhance your employees' interpersonal skills with Syracuse University's unique Bachelor of Professional Studies degree and certificate program. You most likely are listening in today because you play an important role in your organization in training and engaging employees. We are hopeful by the end of the presentation, you will discover the benefits of this program to you, your employees, and your organization. My name is Kylie Haley and I'm a marketing manager for the Syracuse program and I will be guiding you throughout the webinar. So let's get started. We are thrilled to be joined today by two industry experts and instructors in the Bachelor of Professional Studies program. Our first presenter is Susan Conklin. Susan is an instructor of management, organizational development, and cultural studies, as well as a consultant and trainer. She uses her 25 years of experience managing people and projects to develop training programs that improve business performance. Her consulting, training, and coaching services focus on personal and interpersonal skill development, leadership, and organizational development. Her clients span public and private corporations and institutions. Susan holds an MBA from Syracuse with a concentration in marketing and organizational development. Her corporate experience includes leadership positions with GE and Carrier Corp, as well as several small businesses. Our co-presenter today is Dr. Michael Evans. Dr. Evans is a professor, author, and consultant. He has worked with numerous federal agencies and private firms providing professional and organizational development, including the United States Army, Corps of Engineers, the Environmental Protection Agency, the U.S. Secret Service, the Social Security Administration, Harley-Davidson, and Tropicana, to just name a few. Prior to his consulting career, he served in the U.S. Navy CBs as a field engineer and material logistics officer. Michael is a graduate of Syracuse University and the University of Sarasota. He holds several degrees, a BS in policy studies, an MA in secondary education, a master's in public administration, and an EDD in leadership and behavioral sciences. In this webinar today, we are going to be covering the following items. Current trends in employer workforce needs, the value of this very unique Bachelor of Professional Studies program, the three components of human excellence, which is a topic covered in the program curriculum, and tuition and enrollment information. So let's get started with current trends in employer workforce needs. Today here are two stats that I wanted to bring up um, to the group. Most likely you serve a human resource function in your organization, so these trends won't be surprising to you. The first statistics comes from research from Cigna, the health insurance company. They saved $1.29 in reduced turnover and recruiting costs for every dollar they spent on tuition reimbursement. Participants were 10% more likely to be promoted and made an average of 43% more over three years than colleagues who did not take advantage of the program. This really shows the, that education benefits the employer and the employee. Another study shows that 44% of full-time employees cited a lack of learning opportunities as a reason they left their last position. It truly demonstrates the value of keeping your employees engaged. Here we see two survey stats that showcase the value of soft skills to employers. Soft skills are personal attributes that enable someone to interact effectively and harmoniously with other people. 92% of executives said soft skills were equally important or more important than technical skills. 59% of hiring managers said a lack of soft skills among candidates is limiting company productivity. And when we go to this slide, this really expands a little bit more on our soft skills. You'll see there's different percentages here for um, the characteristics that are needed for, from employees, like resilience, interpersonal skills, um, leadership skills, and communication skills. I know Susan and Michael have even more insight on these statistics. Would you guys like to join? Right. Thanks, Kylie. Uh, one one of the the points of the slide that that struck my mind is that I read a recent study, a workplace study, that actually spoke to the fact that resilience is the number one indicator of success in employees. So rightfully so that we see at the top of our list here. Uh, we'll also notice that uh, a lot of these there's a lot of overlap in this this slide. Uh, obviously, leadership skills uh, where we see 80.1 percent of uh, uh, as a, a need for for employees 
that all encompasses a lot of the other skills as well. So some other value, uh, when, when we think about our program, some things that, that we would like to, to inform people about is the, the fact that we as professors are, are we're professors of practice. We, we currently are working in the field, continually using and honing our skills. We, we practice what we preach. Um, also, there's, the, we, we, there's continuity. We really strive to make sure that there is continuity among our classes. Uh, as faculty, we collaborate, we compare course content, you know, just to make sure that things flow together between courses. Uh, redundancy, in, in a good way, there's redundancy between our courses uh, with critical topics. For instance, Mike and I often inter intertwine uh, emotional intelligence topics throughout all of our courses, uh, and, and so students readily uh, have the opportunity to apply this material in new ways, using new perspectives and new frames of reference. Also, we, we encourage our students to draw on their, their own personal experiences, their work experiences, but also personal situations as examples to learn from. Uh, and we also require some demonstration of learning and application with various assignments and, and projects. And, you know, I, th I think of this is where the rubber meets the road. Students are really practicing what they are learning in real time. Uh, and, and as I sort of alluded to above, these skills are transferable. Uh, students often remark that many of the, the activities and assignments that they are, that they're working on, the skills they're taking away can easily be applied to both both their worlds, their 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 personal as well as their professional lives. Um, you know, some of some of the topics like communication and problem solving and decision making. Uh, easily, students see how to use these tools in a wide variety of contexts and and ways. And, and I just wanted to. Uh, bring up one other item that's not on this, this uh, list that Mike and I talk about often that, that I think something that does set our program apart is, is we, we have the mindset of, of mentoring and coaching. Uh, and so, you know, many of our courses tend to be very reflective. And so it's, it's somewhat personal to the student or, or personalized I, uh, maybe is a better way to think of it. We place heavy emphasis on feedback and, and discussions, and our students uh, routinely, we, we always hear how much they, they really do appreciate the, the personal feedback. Uh, Mike, do, would you would you speak to the capstone course? Uh, because that's a, another, another uh, unique item. Sure, thanks Sue. So the, the, the introduction course and the capstone course, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to teach both of those. And so with our introductory course, as Sue was mentioning, we really kind of set the stage uh, for the other courses that are going to uh, be following that. And the capstone course is unique, I believe, compared to other programs that are out there that have capstone courses is because it captures a, a combination of all of the possible courses that the student could have taken throughout the BPS program and actually has them put those into real life application of how they're going to apply them, starting off with them going back and taking, uh, picking eight to 10 classes that they have taken and what were the learning points and the walkaway points and how are they applying those currently and how can they apply those learning pieces in the future as they get ready to graduate. Because typically the capstone course we call the senior seminar here is typically the last course that students are actually taking. So it's, it, it's unique in that way where we're really having students go back and reflect on the last year, two years, some of them nine years, if that's how long it's taken them to get through the program, and really be able to say, oh, these are the things that I've done and I've learned, these how I've been able to apply them over this period of time, but equally important, this is how I see myself utilizing this, not just to uh, refine myself and better my path for myself further um, as I move further on in my career and even in my own personal life, but how can I also change and impact other individuals around me based upon those learnings? So, so on that note is where is when we think about um, in in the business world and even in you know realization is even in our own personal lives we we as individuals bring three components to the table and 
The first being, as many of you were hired probably for your jobs, were based upon your technical abilities. So whatever your craft is that you prescribe to, it's the, the ins and outs of being able to do whatever that job is. You know, and, and as I mentioned, before, saying there a second ago, even in our own personal lives, we have certain technical abilities that we bring to probably our household as individuals. The second thing that we as individuals bring to the table um, is what we consider emotional intelligence. And emotional intelligence falls into, and we'll talk about them in greater detail in a few minutes, but fall into uh, four different areas, and those four areas are self-awareness, self-management, social awareness, and relationship management. And just in a nutshell, what they encompass is how we as individuals, uh, it's all the interpersonal stuff, how we interact with other individuals, how we are able to recognize what's going on. And the last piece here that we bring to the table is our cognitive functioning, our cognitive ability, you could call it. And really, this is your problem-solving techniques that you bring to the table. So it's you really being able to uh, being able to problem solve them, be able to know when problems need to be solved, and having the right tools in place to work through those processes. Now, the theory would say that if we as individuals have heightened technical ability and heightened emotional intelligence, then the cognitive functioning automatically occurs pretty seamlessly for us because we have all of the tools in place. We're able to see the emotional aspect of things that are going on plus the technical things that are going on, combining them together to get the best decisions. Um, and that, that, that is just not just for problem solving, but it's also for refining ourselves as individuals. Because I think this next slide actually illustrates exactly what you were saying, Mike. Uh, this the the iceberg here shows that you know we see the the proverbial tip of the iceberg with our skills and knowledge, and and what floats above the surface. This is certainly necessary, as Mike was was saying that most of us, when we're hired, we're 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 hired uh, for our our technical skills and our our knowledge. Uh, and these are necessary for top performance, but that's there's more to the story than that. So what we, we think about is that these, our skills and our, our, our technical skills, our, our knowledge, they'll get us in the door, but when we look below the surface of our iceberg, it's, it's these, uh, these characteristics uh, that really revolve around emotional intelligence. It's these that will... Uh, ensure our, our long-term success. Uh, so so the, the skills and knowledge get us in the door, but the emotional intelligence characteristics will open more doors. And I, I have an interesting uh, little anecdote here. A, a client that I was working with uh, recently, uh, it, uh, he was a, um, at this point he is in the, the executive leadership team, but he rose through the ranks of the organization as an engineer, and he was a very good engineer, uh, but, the, and this is typically what happens when we're promoted and advancing in the organization, we're, we're usually recognized for our, our technical skills and abilities, and then when, as we advance, in the organization, we, we suddenly realize that our, the necessary skill sets are shifting. Uh, so this particular gentleman, we asked him, so, so what amount of time, you know, do you spend on, on technical versus emotional intelligence? And he said that as an engineer, he spent 90% of his time engineering with his technical skills. And then as he advanced now in his current position of leadership, he is spending 90% of his time on people issues. So that's really where uh, the, the emotional t intelligence uh, and, and being skilled and, and practiced in, in these areas really pay off. So, you know, this isn't to say that if you're, if you're not planning on moving or someone isn't planning on advancing in a career, in their career to supervise role type positions, that, not, that they don't need emotional intelligence. <laughs> we need the emotional intelligence for teams. We need emotional intelligence for understanding the interests behind the positions of other individuals. We need emotional intelligence to understand why we do what we do and what the impact of that is on other individuals, including our customers, our peers, our coworkers, anyone that we're interacting with. So um, even though it is a break point for individuals that want to move up in career type positions, they have to develop and refine these emotional intelligence things. It's also equally important for individuals, even if they're not planning to go to that place. Absolutely. Thanks, Mike. 
So we've been spending a we spent a lot of time. You're talking about emotional intelligence. You're probably thinking, what is this? Is this BPS program emotional intelligence program? Well, not necessarily. But what it does do is it. You know, we look at if we think of technical abilities, that's more we look at that as more of the theories that we bring to the table because that's what a lot of the theories are. They're technical processes about how we go about doing something, learning something, how we go about putting things into place. The emotional intelligence piece, though, is encompassed and embedded within the BPS program, which is very exciting because most individuals don't come to the table with these skills in their hands. And so what it does allow, it, it allows this nice integration of getting the whole picture of what individuals need. So students will go through the theory, go through the processes, which are a more technical piece, but they're challenged in their assignments and their dialogue with one another and us as the professors to have to dig deeper, as Sue mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, about digging deeper into the reasons why and what they're doing. And, and so that's, that's the uniqueness, and that's why we're spending so much time here really emphasizing on this emotional intelligence. But in case you don't know what emotional intelligence is, I kind of alluded to it here a second ago about the four different categories. I'll just talk briefly about each of these. So the first, as you see here, is self-awareness. And what self-awareness is, it's simply that. It's understanding why we do what we do, understanding our own emotions, understanding the things that trigger us as individuals to behave in certain ways that we do, understanding where our value systems are, why we believe what we believe, which ultimately determine the actions that we take. So that's the self-awareness um, aspect. I like to think of this uh, also as kind of knowing what makes us tick. Like Mike said, knowing what, you know, knowing our hot buttons, and, and certainly most everyone has them, uh, knowing what motivates us, knowing knowing why you know the whys of, of what we do, and and some of the the tools that we use, we do we you know, I think in most classes throughout our program we do assessments and surveys, 360 degree uh, assessments, reflections. Uh, so there there are a lot of a lot of tools that that enable our students to to uh, become more self aware. Next slide. The second category or characteristic we would, would be self-management. And I should have said in the beginning, we, we prescribe, there's lots of individuals that talk about emotional intelligence. We prescribe to the Goldman model uh, pretty much. And so these are the, the, the major areas that they speak to. But with self-management, it is just as it states for those characteristics. So it's being able to feel comfortable and embrace change, realizing that change and conflict, both of those items are great that we wouldn't be able to develop and mature as a society and as an individual unless, unless those things were in front of us. It's also the ability to be able to access the tools that we would call like soft skills, such as reflective listening, um, being able to assert to individuals in a respectful way, addressing their behavior versus them personally, uh, being able to understand the difference between an individual's positions and their interests, the things that really motivate them, that are driven behind their value systems. So it's all of these, I like to look at it as like a toolbox. Maybe it's because of my past engineering days that I had, but it's like a toolbox for me that I can dig into and grab into. And I look at it that way for the students, that they have different tools that they can access at any given moment to address situations and be able to manage themselves in those actual situations. And included in this, in the self-management, which connects directly back to that self-awareness, it's being able to understand our own emotional impulses, what's physically actually occurring within ourselves and being able to manage the emotions so they don't override our rational thinking. I like to think of this as, as our filter. Self-management is our filter. I'm sure every one of us can think of someone that, that we've known in our lives that we, we think, you know, they, they say the first thing that come, pops into their head and, and we think, oh my goodness, do they not have a filter? Well, that's what self-management is really about. And as Mike mentioned, it's, it's about responding appropriately. Okay, so really thinking and choosing in a, in a very purposeful way how we will respond to a given situation. And what's interesting is that when, you know, many of us form habits, habits in our communication patterns, habits in the way that we interact with people. And, and so what we try to emphasize with our students is, you know, when, when, when we, we get an impulse or a stimulus, Typically, for, for within with habits, we it's stimulus response, stimulus response, 
Uh, so what we try to do is break that cycle and encourage our students to to pause before they respond and actually think about the implications of that and, and consider changing that response, knowing that, again, we have a choice in how we respond. The third area is social awareness. And social awareness is understanding and being able to recognize something's going on with other individuals. So, and also equally important than just being able to recognize what's going on with them, it goes back to those tools I was talking about in self-management. So it's not just utilizing the tools to control and to refine ourselves, but at this point, being able to use tools to assist other individuals in refining themselves and being able to get the best out of themselves, teams, or any other setting that individuals may fall into. So. Uh, the, to me, this is all about empathy, you know, the, the uh, walking in, in the shoes of others. Uh, so in, in addition, you know, it's, it's things like uh, diffusing situations, um, decision making using a human approach, uh, as well as, a, you know, a, the, you know the things are not always black and white. So, so um, using a human approach to decision making as well. And, and also understanding, uh, you know, what uh, uh, understanding others and and leveraging uh, and appreciating diverse people and diverse thoughts, um, you know, and, and coaching, as I mentioned earlier, coaching and, and mentoring uh, is something that that we feel is is uh, is a, certainly a benefit in our program, and you know, so so also. Um, valuing the re relationships that that we we have and and nurturing them uh, in kind in the last area uh, our characteristic is the relationship management so once we have a good understanding of ourselves we know how to manage ourselves and be able to manage and control those emotional impulses so they don't override our rational thinking and we're able to utilize that then to respond to other individuals in various types of situations that they may have to ultimately get the best out of those individuals and the best out of the people that they're interacting with as a result of what their behaviors will, will possibly be as a result of that. That's when we move to relationship management. And this is really about where all of the intersections hit, hit the corner at the same time. So, and it's about where individuals then are able to communicate in a different way with one another that they may have be at odds with one another with, with what the ever the outcome may be that they want to achieve but they're open enough to have dialogue with one another to have a good understanding of where the other individuals are coming from and then ultimately as a result of that to make the best decision even if that decision within that relationship is to agree to disagree at that point what it is is that if we are able to combine those other three and really master those other three areas, then even if we get to the agree to disagree with other individuals, the dialogue still hasn't stopped. And that's what the beauty of all of this is. Where typically when people don't have one or more, more importantly, the self-awareness of themselves, that the usually the communication process, and maybe some of you have experienced in this life, in your lives, that that's where the communication process ends up saying, well, we agree to disagree, let's not communicate anymore. Mm -hmm. And so it dissolves that process from moving any further, any further. So, Yeah, I, and on that point, Mike, it, it's really all about interdependency and, you know, and, and the realization that none of us work in a vacuum. We, we need each other to accomplish our goals. So, uh, and, and just an, another thought, uh, just one of the classes that I just finished, uh, our, my students were, were very, um, taken by the concept of influencing without authority you know and what does that mean that that means i might not have you know positionally i might not be the the manager of of that department so i might not have the uh the the overt authority to to do certain things but i still can find ways to influence decisions influence people in a positive way by using some of these skills that we've been talking about and, and this is key because we we emphasize throughout our program that leadership is not a position it's a mindset it's a role that anyone wherever you are in an organization you can fill that role so it, it's really doesn't doesn't it's not positional uh, dependent 
And I just want to emphasize, Mike, you just prompted another thought here that, that self-awareness is really the key. We consider that the cornerstone of emotional intelligence. Without that, you know, we, uh, you have a much less likely chance of achieving any of the other uh, quadrants. Uh, so, so we really like to focus uh, throughout on the self-awareness piece. Great. Um, thank you, Susan and Mike. So I'm going to talk a little bit about <clears throat> some of the details of the program. The program was developed um, to really align with the current needs of the workforce today. The goal um, really is to create leaders in your organization that are well-rounded, knowledgeable, and capable of making an impact. It covers a lot of the um, curriculum that Mike and Susan just went over. Um, so we're going to just talk a little bit about the two different tracks that a student can take in, these, in this program. So first is the creative leadership track. This really highlights traits like agility, creativity, and innovation, and emphasizes the value of understanding and facilitating diversity. Skills learned include cooperative negotiations, information reporting, and presentation and technology innovation. The knowledge management track teaches students how to streamline processes and make information available when, where, and by whom in the organization it is needed. Skills learned include collaborative problem solving, data management analysis, and financial applications. So the, with this program, we're really trying to help your employees succeed, and we try to make it available and convenient for them to do so as well. So the program is really structured to meet the demands of today's working adults. There is a complete degree program as well as certificate options. The certificates can be completed in 12 months or less generally, depending on a, per, a student's time commitments, work, family, um, and social obligations. It can be completed online, on campus, or you can actually do a combination of both, which is really a good option for many students. The program is part-time and it provides convenience and flexibility. Students can work and fit the program into their schedules. This slide details some of the tuition information. We would love to have individual meetings with you to discuss options for your organization. This will help us really understand the needs of your organization, the number of students that you would have available for a cohort, and we can work with you on developing a cohort tuition that makes sense. As an example of the flexibility we have, we can set up custom billing options and a custom portal for your students to meet your needs. We're pretty flexible and we'd love to discuss that in more details with you. I see a question that just popped up on the questions um, that I just want to read to both of you. Why shouldn't I hire trainers to come in to offer sessions for all my employees to learn these soft skills instead of helping only a few employees with this degree program? Do one of you want to take that question? Yeah, this is Mike Evans. I'll, I'll address it. So um, as, as was stated in the beginning, I am a consultant and I do a lot of leadership training per se in addition to counseling for federal agencies and also some corporate agencies and the one one thing so there's a lot of pros and cons as anyone would imagine of having a trainer come in to do a uh, consulting work and to train individuals on leadership skills versus having individuals take courses that would also offer the same content and material over a period of time so where the largest benefit comes in that I can offer to you of the pros and cons is that typically when individuals go through a leadership program, whether it's a week program that someone establishes or even with majority of mine are year programs where I meet once a month with the same group of individuals to learn different aspects of leadership skills which include all of this emotional intelligence and develops their cognitive ability that the the, the difference is is that the studies will show is that the majority of individuals after that year program unless they have something that was continuous to the process of, you know, of, of them remembering and, and utilizing those skills is that within six months typically individuals will lose 80 percent of the stuff that they remember. So on that note, it's not a good sales pitch for consultants, but the realization is that where the college program does it differently is that individuals are taking separate courses but what ends up happening is at the end of the program, individuals, the capstone is very unique in this program in that what it does is it encompasses all of the programs that they've taken. 
So I go back and I think of my bachelor's degree, and I, I probably couldn't be too great in remembering everything I learned in those. So this program here offers a, a completely different end result for individuals because they're forced to. It's part of their capstone is to look back at all of the courses that they've taken to obtain that bachelor's degree or that certificate program that they were in, and then be able to figure out how they can utilize that to, um, to advance themselves, whether in the current, uh, current uh, um, employment that they're in or possibly if they're looking for new employment, how they can utilize that as a tool to brand themselves above other individuals. So there's a large difference where typically, as I said, with consultants, if you have a consultant come in such as myself or Sue and do a training program, even if it's a year long program, there isn't that gel piece that happens at the end for the individuals. It's usually individuals are learning content as they go through. They are having some reflection, but it's that one piece that pulls it all together. So. And, and I'll add to that, Mike, also that, that, that nature of that capstone course is that, that we're accumulating and, and drawing on the skills that, that we've, we've learned throughout, our, throughout the degree program and uh, finding ways to, again, you know, I, I am hearing when, when I'm teaching my courses, I'm hearing about things that students took from Dr. Evans' course. Or, or, or somebody else's course. And so I think that that capstone is really a way to kind of document, like, like you said, solidify that and, and give students something to, to really walk away with, something substantial to walk away with. And it all, again, the nature of the content, it all falls back into uh, being valuable to, to the, 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 our students' employers as well. Great. Well, thank you, Mike, and thank you, Susan. So we wanted to thank you for taking the time out of your day to join us and, and hear what we, this program has to offer. On the screen, you'll see our website address, telephone, and email address. Please feel free to reach out to an enrollment advisor today, and we can talk through your particular organization and your employee needs. Thank you.